Where did the POWs go? One of the most memorable scenes in Band of Brothers is a scene of thousands of German soldiers surrendering. This scene was inspired by this famous photograph of German prisoners of war marching between the lanes of the Autobahn, built in the 1930s to advance Germany's ambitions. These men were part of over 300,000 men, including 30 generals, who surrendered after their encirclement at the Battle of the Ruhr Pocket. But what happened next? The event was a huge achievement for the Western Allies and signaled the war's end was imminent. The victory also came at the cost of only 10,000 casualties. Germany no longer had the resources to put up a strong fight. Many of the men who surrendered were without rations and there were clear supply shortages. The Battle of the Ruhr Pocket lasted from the 1st of April until April 21, 1945, and nine days later, Hitler committed suicide. The Allies were not prepared for the volume and speed at which these men surrendered, and local infrastructure could not be depended on. Towns in the Ruhr region, one of the hardest hit areas by Allied bombings, were found in a complete state of rubble. Furthermore, hundreds of thousands of diseased and weakened prisoners of war and slave laborers were liberated in conjunction with the mass surrender. This was Germany's industrial heartland and packed with forced labor transported from across Europe. German forces at the Battle of the Ruhr Pocket were commanded by Field Marshal Model. He committed suicide on the last day of the battle. He had honor enough to instruct youth and non-combatants to attempt to make their way home, but the vast majority of his army surrendered, most of which were hungry. The surrender caught the Allies off guard. British camps were already full to the maximum and refused to take any more prisoners. The Americans hastily constructed the Rhine Meadow Camps, a group of 19 camps built along the Rhine. They were officially named Prisoner of War Temporary Enclosures, and between April and September of 1945, when soldiers were surrendering the hundreds of thousands, they held upwards to two million people. Look at you! You have horses! What were you thinking? That's enough, Webster. Victory turned into a logistics nightmare for the Allies. The Allies would skirt the Geneva Convention, which legally required adequate sustenance for POWs. Supreme Allied Commander Dwight Eisenhower didn't grant all soldiers POW status, rather designated many disarmed enemy forces, a legal maneuver made possible by deeming the soldiers temporarily stateless after Nazi Germany no longer existed. At the end of the war, 3.4 million German soldiers were in the custody of the Western Allies alone. Camps became overcrowded. There were food shortages. Eisenhower requested food aid from Britain, but Britain barely had enough food to feed its own people. And sugar, each person gets eight ounces a week. Logistics did improve at the Rhine camps, in part due to allowing camps to be run by Germans, which included arming German military police. The biggest relief came by quickly releasing all women, youth, and skilled workers back into the public, who were eager to return home or begin rebuilding their nation. The French further drafted 180,000 POWs from the camps for labor needed in France. However, ultimately the Red Cross and Army Medical Department both confirmed the horrid conditions of the camps, which resulted in an estimated 6,000 deaths, mostly from malnutrition. It is unknown how many deaths may have occurred from summary executions or violence. Despite this, overall the official death rate for Germans held by the American military was among the lowest experienced by surrendered combatants during and after the war. Though this must also be viewed in the context that these POWs also spent the least amount of time held as prisoners. By September 1945, nearly all the camps were closed. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this video on the Rear Pocket POWs. If you haven't seen Band of Brothers, do check it out. It's one of the best World War II productions ever made. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.